Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter The Solid State. In the previous parts, I told you about the unit cell and I told you about the 14 Brevet lattices. Now having known this, it is important that we understand how many atoms are actually present in a unit cell so that once we have that idea, we know how much, what would be the mass of a unit cell and if we know the volume, we can calculate the density. So to further intensify our studies of the solid state, it is now important to know how many atoms are there in a unit cell and how many atoms are there in different types of unit cells. So in your syllabus, you have the simplest type of unit cell that is the primitive cubic, the body centered cubic and the face centered cubic lattice, uh, sorry, unit cells. And how many atoms are there? So let us start with our study of this. As I told you, the primitive unit cell has, the cubic unit cell is a cube where each corner is represented by a lattice site which is occupied by an atom. There are three diagramic uh, three ways in which you can draw these diagrams and show the different types of unit cells. The first one is the open structure where we draw the imaginary lines between the centers of the atoms and these imaginary lines actually give us the shape that we are looking for. So for example the cubic unit cell, these are eight atoms, the centers of eight atoms which when we join we realize it forms a cubic pattern and that is why we call it the primitive cubic unit cell. So the open structure shows the centers of different atoms as the corners and the lines which show us the actual structure as we would imagine it. The second type of diagram that you could draw is a space filling structure. My diagrammatic skills are really bad. So I would suggest you see this in your textbook, both these diagrams, these are actually not made the way they should have been made. Yet I tried my best, uh, given my artistic skills, the space filling structure is actually where we do not draw the lines and we draw the atoms. And since we draw the atoms, now these two atoms I've tried to show you here. These two atoms, which were the centers of atoms actually, I've shown here. And I could show you three atoms in the back and this one I could not, which were, should have been behind it somewhere here. But on the whole you get an idea. The space filling structure is where you actually fill up the space to give you an idea that the, the uh, solid does not actually look like this it actually looks like this where you have all atoms touching each other then as i showed you here if i put this like this do you see you get squares you get squares here a square here and a square here so this would be a cubic lattice so if you imagine eight atoms four in this plane and four in this plane it forms one one primitive cube and then this is the second primitive cube and if you extend this lattice in all three dimensions you will get, get a cubic lattice so a primitive cubic unit cell would be this eight eight of these so if i had drawn lines between the centers of these i would have got this structure if i'm making the actual balls like this i'm showing you the space filling structure and the actual structure is like this where we draw the lines also and show the atoms so that we get both the structure of the cube and how it actually looks. So now that you have understood, these are just the different ways of representing these unit cells. I have, uh, I have resorted to drawing only the open structures for each type because this is difficult for me. And I would suggest you look at them in the textbook where a very precise structure has been given to you. Although I'll be using these balls and the cube to explain it to you. Now, the idea is that if every corner of the unit cell is an atom, if every corner is in an open structure is only the center of an atom and you imagine the structure to be extended because it will form a lattice. The unit cell is not present alone, it is present in a lattice. So if you imagine that this extends to form the lattice, let me make a square here and this becomes the second cell of this lattice. Do you see? And this would extend, I could make the atoms, the unit cells could extend in all three directions and thus result in more or less like this Rubik's cube. You have square, that is cubes, one on top of the other 
and forming layers one behind the other and thus in three dimension this structure keeps on extending. Why am I doing this? Because I want to see that if there is one atom on a corner, how much of it belongs to that unit cell is my idea. I want to know how much of an atom actually belongs. When I told you that when I'm talking of the corner, the corner only represents the center of an atom. So did you notice when I extended this structure, this central atom belongs to this cube also and it belongs to this cube also. And if there was a cube above it, it would belong to that cube also. And if it, there was another cube here, it would belong to that cube also. And that is in one plane. In front of it, the cube present in front of it would also, it will belong to that also and it will belong. So it belongs to, this atom belongs to four uh, cubes in that surface and four cubes that is in that surface and four cubes above it if I'm taking a top atom. Let me just explain this one more way. Let us assume that the room that you are sitting in right now, I would want you to visualize now, that the room that you are sitting in, imagine that it is a cubic lattice. All rooms in the building where you are sitting are all cubes, all rooms are cubes and they are all extended in all directions. So you, ma you can imagine in the center of this Rubik's cube that that cube which is in the center which we cannot see from any side, you are sitting in that room, right? If you are sitting in that room and uh, let's say that corner, look in front of you on the right side, the corner of the roof, that corner has a big huge ball. And that is the center of a, of a cell, of an atom, right? So that is the center and that ball is present here in that corner. And the ball is so big that it can cover half of the room, right? That ball is so big that it can cover half of your room. Why? Because the other half will be covered by a ball, which is on this corner of your room. So from this corner to this corner, you have two balls which are touching each other right so you are focusing on this one this one ball so this ball is the center of this room the center of this i mean that corner you will have this room it will this ball will be present in this room it will be present in the room next to me it will be present in the room across on that side and it will also be present on the room right in front of me so this ball is being shared by four rooms. Now, if I imagine this to be a plane, like we did this, you see this. This is a ball that I'm talking of. You are sitting in this room, in the room here. So this is the corner of the, on the top. And this room, this ball is being shared by this room, this room, this room, and this room. So this ball is being shared by four rooms. And if I imagine this, again, nine more or uh, cubes in front of it there would be nine more cubes in front of it because it's a lattice there are rooms on that side also or if you were not sitting in this room rather you were sitting in this room here in front of it the cube in front of it if you were sitting in that room then this corner would have been your that corner if you were sitting in the room on that side this corner would have been that way for you it would have been uh, on the it would have been your right corner uh, sorry left corner here then that in that uh, layer also the same corner the same corner would belong to four other cubes on that side so one corner of an atom which occupies the corner of a primitive unit cell cubic unit cell it actually is divided that one atom belongs to how many rooms one two three four on this floor and one two three four on the other floor do you get me this ball is equally divided that atom is being divided by this room that room the room there and the room there and also now that is only covering half of the ball because the other half is above it is above it so since it is above the ceiling and it will be on the floor of the upper floor 
it will have the floor of this room above above me the room there above on that side the room there and there so every corner atom at every corner of a primitive unit uh, cubic unit cell belongs to eight separate cubes it belongs to eight cubes or that it is it is being divided into so if i had to count what how much of atom of this atom is present in one cube how much of it is present only one eighth because the rest of it is being divided by the other seven rooms four on the other floor and four three more on this floor so every atom on the corner of a cubic lattice belongs to eight there are eight corners and all eight corners are being each corner is being the atom on each corner is being divided into eight rooms on each corner so if there are eight corners and every ball is contributing only one eighth of it to this room how many atoms in totality do i have in this room for that ball which was on that corner of the roof i have only one eighth in my room so this corner will also be one eighth this is also one eighth that is also one eighth that that i have four corners on the other side of the room i have eight corners in this room so all i have eight atoms contributing one upon eight to this room so on the whole how many atoms do i have i have eight atoms contributing one upon eight so cancel it so i actually have only one atom that truly belongs to this entire room this is very important that you understand that one eighth of each ball belongs to one cube therefore there are eight corners and therefore one eighth of eight corners so one eighth of eight would be one so you actually have only one atom in a primitive cubic unit cell let us move on to the second type now the body center cubic unit cell the body center cubic unit cell as you know has corners atoms on the corners of the cube and there is one atom which belongs to the center now imagine again the room this is the room which has atoms on all the eight corners and there is one atom let us say the ceiling fan is an atom also which is hanging down and is a big ball in the center of the room that is a body centered unit cell this ball which is in the center of the room where you are sitting this room this ball is completely in this room it is not being shared by any it is not present inside the wall because any ball that would be present inside the wall would be shared by that room also and this room also for example if this black the white board was a ball then half of the ball would be in this room and half of it would be in the room behind this so any any ball or atom which is on the center of a face is equally divided by two rooms or two unit cells any atom which is present on the corner is equally divided by eight unit cells and any atom which is present in the center of one unit cell completely it is not touching any wall it is not touching the roof it is not touching the corners that one belongs completely to that room so when you are trying to find out how many atoms are present in a body centered cubic unit cell you will find that there are eight atoms on the corners therefore eight one by eight is equal to one just as we had in the primitive cubic unit cell but in addition to this we have this one atom which totally belongs to this room so we have one of this and one body centered atom which totally belongs to the cube therefore the total number of atoms for this unit cell would be 1 upon 8 into 8 which is equal to 1 plus 1 in the body center that is two atoms would be present interesting so a body centered cubic unit cell would have two atoms in it why because of the eight corners that are occupied and one eighth of that and one body centered atom which completely belongs to that unit cell and the third kind of unit cell is the face centered cubic unit cell 
as I told you that if one ball at the or one atom on the corner of the unit cell belongs to eight different cubes or eight different rooms one ball in the center of a face belongs to two rooms because this face this wall is being shared only by two rooms this room and the room behind this so if there is a ball here half of that ball will fall in this room and half of that ball would fall inside that room right if this was like a wall and it's in the middle of the wall then half of it half of the ball belongs to the room in front and half of it will belong to the room behind it it is not being shared by any other room it is only being shared by two rooms one in front and one behind it so such a uh, such an atom which would fall on the uh, on the face center would be shared by two rooms so for a face centered cubic unit cell you have the eight corners of course occupied so you know the eight corners means one upon eighth of each one upon eight into eight is equal to one so those you already have but you have six faces to a cube how many faces does a cube have it has six faces one two three four five and behind it six so one two three four five six are the six faces of a cube so how many walls does this room have it has four walls the floor and the ceiling so it has six faces the room in which you are sitting has got six faces so if there are six balls on the six faces how much of each ball belongs to your room half of each ball belongs to your room and there are six of them so half of six would be three so we have the eight corners in a face centered unit cell are being occupied and one upon eight is the contribution of each atom therefore you have one atom for that unit cell which are at the corners and the six face centered atoms would be each one would be half half of it is in the room and there are six of them so six into half would be equal to three so what is the total number of atoms in a face centered cubic unit cell the total number of atoms in a face centered cubic unit cell would be one plus three which is equal to four so what do you understand from this which one if you have the same solid let us say the same element present as the body centered as the uh, as the primitive and as the face centered which packing which kind of arrangement do you think which solid would have the most density the most density would be the one where the packing where you have more number of atoms in the same volume and you notice that in the face center cubic you have four atoms for one cube for primitive you have only one atom per cube and for body centered you have two atoms per cube so which would be the most dense obviously face centered which would be the heaviest it would be the face centered arrangement if we are taking the atoms of the same element why because we want all atoms to have the same mass and which would be the most compact arrangement again it would be the face centered right so uh, with this we understand the packing the number of atoms in a unit cell and i'll finish this video here if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now